Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of Sustaining California here on PBS SoCal. I'm David Nazar. We have two special reports for you this evening that you won't want to miss. Later in this broadcast, we'll take you into the heart of the Thomas Fire of December 2017, the worst wildfire ever recorded in state history. We're going to dissect this inferno from all angles with the firefighters, victims, NASA, and climate scientists who believe climate change is a major cause of these massive blazes and a threat to the future of our state. But first, traffic. Sitting in hours of gridlock on surface streets and freeways has become a way of life here in Southern California. Is it possible to build out our highway system while still preserving our open space and wildlands? Now we investigate a controversial Orange County transportation project looking to do just that. About 25 million people live in Southern California in SoCal, where nothing is in walking distance, your car and the state highway system are your lifeline. According to yearly transportation studies, Los Angeles is the most congested city in the nation. Orange County, which borders LA County, has been adding to the gridlock over the decades. This once quiet county, known mostly for orange groves, Disneyland, and Angels Baseball, has developed into high-density urban sprawl with three million residents. And when Orange County really started booming in the 80s, the state of California had to make some decisions how to ease traffic congestion in the region. In 1981, state transportation officials created four new state highways in OC. These were planned to provide alternative routes to one of the country's busiest freeways, Interstate 5, the connector from LA to South Orange County, where much of the residential and industrial development was taking place. These highways included state routes 241, 261, 133 and the 73. Built in the early to mid 90s, the OC toll road system today contains 51 miles of highway that the state owns and maintains. The transportation corridor agencies, known as the TCA, wants to connect the 241 state highway in South Orange County to the I-5 freeway. TCA's original plan was to build the final segment of the 241 toll road around the back of the city of San Clemente go through the northern edge of Camp Pendleton and then meet the I-5. And that's when the battle began. Over the years, TCA fought many lawsuits with environmental groups, most notably the Save San Onofre Coalition, which was comprised of organizations such as the NRDC, Sierra Club, Surfrider, Coastkeeper, and even the state of California. Damon Nagami is with the Natural Resources Defense Council. This environmentalist and senior attorney for the NRDC explains what the battle was all about. We are 12 organizations uh, that are committed to protecting San Onofre State Beach uh, from projects like the uh, toll road. It's been a 15-year campaign uh, to protect San Onofre State Beach and other sensitive lands in that area from uh, this toll road project. Why is it so vital to protect those areas? We're losing our wildlands and uh, open spaces in Southern California. So we need to protect them for future generations. And yet with all that said, when millions of Southern California motorists are pulling their hair out when they sit in gridlock traffic for a couple of hours just to get to and from home and work, they'll say, okay, that's great, but we need transportation. Sustainability is critical to urban areas. We have the hustle and bustle of urban life and you know, the concrete that surrounds us in, in buildings in cities. We need places to be able to go to experience nature and to have fresh air, to have places to exercise, and to be able to connect with uh, you know, the green spaces and, and nature around us. You did not want this 241 toll road project extension. You hated the TCA and everything the TCA was doing. Now you're on board with them. What happened? For many years, the toll road agency had a terrible plan, a terrible route that would have bisected San Onofre State Beach, destroyed the campground there, threatened all kinds of endangered species and wildlife habitat. Uh, and that was just something that we couldn't stand for. And for years, the toll road agency fought us at every turn. Uh, but then we won. Mike Craman is the CEO of the TCA. Craman explains how the transportation corridor agencies reached that win with the environmentalists so the TCA could finally extend 
the 241 toll road. This is an agreement between uh, 15 different environmental groups plus the California Attorney General and the Native American Heritage Commission. The basic fundamental of the agreement is, is our agency agreed that we would not fund or construct a road in certain areas of the county. So we defined an avoidance area and we would avoid those areas in looking at how we solve the transportation problem. Your critics and opponents of the 241 extension are saying it was not a settlement agreement. You bought them off to the tune of $30 million and that's how you got the environmentalists to buy into this. What do you say to that? We have committed to $28 million in a conservation fund which will allow us to then identify mitigation projects in the San Mateo watershed as a preference, uh, but also the adjacent watersheds as well. And that will, is totally in the control of this agency as far as what those projects are, how those funds are expended. It was a huge win for our coalition. It was a huge win for the millions of people who use San Onofre State Beach every year. We have sort of a, a natural conflict there, the need to improve transportation and keep our transportation system sustainable, at the same time protecting natural resources here and keeping that sustainable as well. And that's where this story should end, in a perfect world. The 241 toll road extension can finally be built to connect to the I-5, a collaborative effort where environmentalists and business interests work together to make life sustainable for those who want open space and wildlife preservation, and those who want a sustainable transportation system to ease the horrors of Southern California traffic for present and future generations. Unfortunately, this is where the story gets even more complicated. Tim Brown is the mayor of San Clemente. Brown is convinced the TCA is now going to build the 241 toll road extension directly through his South Orange County city. And now Mayor Brown and San Clemente are suing the TCA to stop the extension project. The sustainability is preserving things we have now for future generations to enjoy. And the idea of building a toll road through San Clemente's open space as a way of creating sustainability for our community is laughable. So we have eight ideas that we're now looking at as part of what's called a project study report. So a project study report is the project initiation phase for a state highway project. So we're just in the first phase of initiating the project now. Let's say your final plan to build the toll road extension does have to be built through part of San Clemente or in their backyard. How do you justify it to angry San Clemente residents? So what we're trying to do is solve a regional transportation problem here. And uh, as to what the solution that will be, what the impacts would be to people, that's what we will identify and study through the environmental review process. We will look at noise, we will look at visual, we will look at concerns people have, impacts to their open space and things like that. So right now, are you on the record as saying you folks are not sure that the new freeway is going to necessarily cut through San Clemente? The jury's still out. Absolutely. Uh, there are alternatives on the table. I think it's deeply concerning. We've created a ton of open space so we could enjoy uh, all of the, you know, the beautiful you know, landscape that San Clemente has. We've uh, really fought to preserve a lot of that, um, a lot of that essential charm. And I think a toll road threatens those key things that make San Clemente really unique. And yet TCA says it hasn't made a final decision as to where the toll road is going to be built. So why are you so worried? Yes, of course, that's their official position, but they have declared very resolutely where it can't go, right, which is south of the city of San Clemente. And then they've stated a priority that it has to connect to the freeway as one of their priorities. And then they only have all of their alignments run through the city of San Clemente. And so I think it's a little bit of theater to say that, well, we haven't made any decisions when ultimately whatever decision they have to make has to come through our town. Do you believe they're lying to you? Uh, we find ourselves looking at, you know, a, a four-lane uh, highway coming through the middle of our community. And I just, I, I think that, you know, whatever the position is here, I think that residents of San Clemente would just appreciate some direct honesty. Micah Rizabal is a senior transportation manager and the project manager for the IBI group. IBI is an abbreviation for Infrastructure, Buildings, Intelligence. 
IBI is the company San Clemente hired to do a transportation study of the 241 toll road extension through their city. Swath of land here is where the proposed 241 alignment would go through. Why is that a bad thing? We want to cons conserve as much open space as possible. Um, there are sensitive uh, environmental areas here. Uh, there are homes that we would intrude upon. Uh, so that's something that uh, we'd have to consider with all our, all our different options. You and your company took part in a study to evaluate this area and the feasibility of the 241 extension. What were your findings? So we took an unbiased look. Uh, when we say unbiased is because we're using a travel demand model um, that's commissioned by the Orange County Transportation Authority, which models year 2040 demographics, projections, employment, housing, uh, various projects that come online. Uh, so that's where we're getting our basis for our traffic numbers. We're not manipulating the model in any way. Um, it is what they give to us. So um, well, from that, we look at, you know, what are the volumes uh, on a daily perspective through South Orange County and through the city of San Clemente. And in your information gathering, what have your numbers found? Relatively low. We're talking about 12,000 vehicles per day using this thing. Uh, major capital improvement project, only about 12,000 uh, vehicles using it. In other words, Arizable says there is basically no demand for the 241 extension due to what he says is an extremely low volume of cars expected to use the toll road for the next 20 plus years. TCA's Mike Craman disagrees. Craman insists the congestion is much worse than what Arizable is claiming. The villain here is traffic. And so we really need to keep the focus on what is the problem we're trying to solve. Now, Mike Craman of the TCA, who you just heard, tells me that state highways like the 241 are built for sustainable regional mobility. In other words, not for one single neighborhood or just one city. And Craman says while the initial traffic counts could be 12,000 per day, he claims there are actually 130,000 vehicles per day that use the I-5 through that South Orange County stretch and even more vehicles on weekends. Craman also tells me that without the 241 extension, traffic will become an unsustainable barrier because he says there is no alternate route in case of an emergency like a fire, earthquake, or accident that could possibly shut down the I-5 freeway. The worry of wildfires shutting down freeways and highways has become a legitimate concern in California as evidenced in December 2017 when the worst wildfire ever recorded in state history devastated parts of the Southland, destroying homes, roads, and, well, basically everything in its path. While there were several wildfires in Southern California last winter, the Thomas Fire was a blaze many Californians won't forget. Typically, these wildfires hit our area early summer through October. Could climate change be the reason California's wildfire season raged on into December? Southern California, December 2017, several massive wildfires attacked the region from all corners, from southern San Diego County all the way to northern Ventura County in Santa Barbara. There were four major fires north of downtown Los Angeles. The worst was the Thomas Fire in Ventura County. There was also the Creek Fire in Silmar, the Rye Fire in Santa Clarita, and the Skirball Fire on the Sepulveda Overpass in West LA. The combination of these fires scorched hundreds of square miles and destroyed or damaged thousands of homes, forcing both mandatory and voluntary evacuations throughout several Southland counties. Many scientists now believe climate change is a major contributor of wildfires in California and across the nation, particularly in western states like Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Wildfire is a really interesting sustainability issue. Alex Hall is a climate scientist with the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability at UCLA. Hall directs the Center for Climate Science and is with the university's Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences Department. For the past 200 years or so, we've been burning fossil fuels. That has led to an increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases trap heat, and that has led to a steady warming of the planet that has been accelerating in recent decades. Fires are driven by dry and hot winds. 
and when winds become hotter and drier, um, that leads to greater fire risk. Um, climate change also affects vegetation. It tends to dry out vegetation during our hot summers and it dries it up more as the climate warms more and so that can create a greater risk for fire as well. Ironically, we are interviewing Alex Hall on the roof of one of the UCLA campus buildings just a few minutes from where the Skirball Fire and the Bel Air Fire in the wildland region you see off in the distance surrounded UCLA during the December 2017 inferno. UCLA was in fact a staging area for firefighters and emergency responders trying to fight the blazes where these hillside wildlands and LA's densified urban sprawl intersect. Climate change increases the dryness of the winds when they occur. It increases the temperature of the winds when they occur. And it also increases the swings between very wet and dry years. So what happened um, with the, the fires last season were a great example of what's to come with fire. We had a really, really um, big wet season in 2016, 2017. And that led to a buildup of vegetation that vegetation dried out over the course of a very hot summer in 2017. Um, and then the rainy season did not arrive as it should have. And so by the time we got to December, we had these very hot and dry Santa Ana events that occurred. And that was the perfect conditions for a very large fire. Climate change will increase the frequency of those types of events. And based upon all your scientific data, you really do believe that this isn't just par for the course in normal Southern California, whether that climate change is playing a major role in this. We're beginning to see the, the climate change signal emerge, certainly in the, in the climate record. Um, and then at the same time, the fires are also becoming unprecedented. We're seeing fires that are setting records in terms of their size and their intensity. To really get an idea of what Hall is talking about, we have to take you back to December 2017 for a personal look at the Thomas Fire, the worst California wildfire ever recorded in state history. During December, Southern California had hurricane force-like winds near 70 miles an hour. That's something the SoCal area hadn't seen in decades. Firefighters had established a command post at the Ventura County Fairgrounds. It was a 24-7 effort for all the fire crews. Our news drone demonstrates the enormity of that team effort. There were more than 500 engines from all over California stationed at the fairgrounds with more than 2,500 firefighters. Chris Harvey was part of that team. We've had a long history of uh, destructive and catastrophic wildfires in, in, in Southern California. We're talking about a fire that's over the size of the city of Detroit at this point. Weeks later, the Thomas fire had engulfed an area larger than New York City. It is like a war zone. You're driving through areas where they're completely burnt out and black. Um, it looks like a bomb went off. Gretel Compton lived in Ojai during the fire. Ojai is a quaint, artsy town of nearly 8,000 residents about 90 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. Gretel explained the Thomas fire had surrounded her area and destroyed part of her home. I want to go home. I want to see what the damage is. I have no water, I have no power. Um, I'm on a well, you know, all of that stuff is burnt. Other friends and neighbors have lost everything, everything, everything. And now they have to start from scratch and it's just it's so heart-wrenching. This was not part of the actual Thomas Fire. To try and sustain the neighboring healthy wildlife areas, firefighters were taking preventive measures to stop the Thomas Fire from scorching these hillsides that were being threatened. Firefighters were conducting controlled burns so those areas did not burn in an uncontrolled fashion later. Chris Harvey, back at the Ventura Command Post, explained there are various types of preventive measures to sustain wildland. There's brush clearing. We also have some livestock vegetation management where, where possible. We'll get uh, sheep and goats out in these areas to try and graze and, and knock some of those fire fuels down. Uh, and then there's physical, actual removing the fuel. So disking, mowing, plowing, uh, felling trees. So there's a number of different uh, techniques that we can use to get those fire fuels reduced. Unfortunately, despite all the efforts to sustain a healthy environment, the Thomas Fire just wreaked havoc with the perfect storm of conditions. We hiked through part of the Ojai Valley wilderness. This highway was closed off to pedestrians and motorists. There had been mandatory evacuations all throughout this area. 
there were many homes on the other side of this hill in harm's way and it was kind of eerie last december not seeing anyone out here this snapshot of the thomas fire was a good example of what fire crews were battling from the ground all throughout ventura county and ojai when you mix urban sprawl with a wilderness setting this is what you get and because of the drought that we've had here in southern california for so many years the entire Southern California region is now an inferno. And this is how it begins. Firefighters have left this area because they were concerned that there was moments ago a 40-foot wall of flames here. Any wildfire could have devastating consequences, the loss of life, the structural damage, the tremendous financial toll. And then there's the environmental toll. These disasters can destroy forested areas, damage the habitat of plants and animals, deplete natural resources, and cause heavy smog damaging the ozone because of the enormous amounts of carbon dioxide. Despite all this, scientists explain wildfires, particularly forest fires, can actually benefit the environment. They can rid forested areas of dead and decaying matter and provide natural fuel during drought periods. They can also help the ecosystem balance because they destroy diseased plants and dangerous insects like the bark beetle that has decimated millions of acres of California forests over the past decade. And the fires even regenerate seeds for trees that require intense heat every few years to sprout. Wildfire is a natural part of our landscapes and um, our natural landscapes actually need wildfire to regenerate and we have to learn how to coexist sustainably with wildfire going forward. And that's something that we haven't done a great job with um, in California. While California climate scientists like Alex Hall are trying to learn more about this coexistence and the impact climate change has on wildfires, NASA scientists are using innovation and technology to do their own information gathering on wildfire sustainability. In fact, during the Thomas Fire, NASA got its view of the fire from 70,000 feet above ground. A team of NASA scientists used this high-altitude aircraft to survey the environmental impacts the fires were causing. The aircraft is equipped with a high-tech imaging spectrometer built at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena. It's called AVERIS, the Airborne Visible Infrared Imaging Spectrometer. AVERIS collects images through smoke and dust to study the ground surface below things like trees and other foliage that become fuel for wildfires, water content in leaves, particle matter in the air produced from the smoke, and it accurately measures fire temperatures. While this technology helps scientists learn about wildfire cause and prevention and the collateral damage to the environment, it is still the boots on the ground that ultimately have the best perspective. We do take a, a, a very personal feeling to what's going on here. And, uh, so I hate to say this, but this, this could continue to be a very explosive and expansive event. As a scientist, I'm very concerned about our, our, our um, sustainability um, relationship with fire. The most important thing that we can do to combat climate change is to stop burning fossil fuels. We need to um, replace those energy sources with renewable energy sources. Examples of those are solar power, wind power, hydropower. Those are the things we need to rely on in the future. We will see um, less warming um, in, in California, and that will lead to less of, of an impact on fire. That will lead to um, less of an increase in fire risk. Climate scientists like Alex Hall are encouraging everyone to adopt more sustainable energy practices like reducing the amounts of gasoline we use and to try and stop burning coal and oil where possible as a way to help limit the effects of climate change because at final tally, the wildfires impacted about 11 million Californians in 2017. Well, that's it for this edition of Sustaining California. Please email us your questions or comments to sustaining at pbssocal.org. That's sustaining at pbssocal.org. Also, tweet me your questions or comments at David Nazar News. That's David Nazar News. I'll be sure to get back with you. Thank you so much for joining us here at PBS SoCal.